So welcome back to another video and in this one we are going to deal with a very important technique of biology that is flow cytometry. Now from the name cytometry you can deduce that it has got something to do with cells. Now this flow cytometry can have various purposes. First, it can detect the cell size. Second, it can detect the cell complexity. Or we can also say that it can detect the granular complexity of a cell. That is, which cell is having uh, more number of granules inside it and which cell is having less number of granules inside it. And the third is flow cytometry can also be used to detect any specific proteins, any specific proteins present inside the cell. Present in the cell. Present in the cell or on the cell surface. So these three things can be detected by flow cytometry. And when we talk about proteins, when we talk about proteins, this is detected with the help of a specific antibody, which is uh, specific to that protein which we're detecting. And this antibody is tagged with a fluorescent dye. A fluorescent dye and hence since it is having the uh, involvement of antibodies flow cytometry also comes under the techniques of or can be classified as an immunotechnique so that is an overview of flow cytometry now let's move into the process the flow cytometer has a tube, has a tube like this, where these parts are filled with a fluid sheath. These fluid sheets, they enhance, they enhance the movement enhance the movement of the cell, or the cell movement. Now the cells, which are subjected to flow cytometry, comes in from this, uh, this tube. They flow through this tube, and when they come out, they are subjected to, they are subjected to laser light they're subjected to laser light. And since they're subjected to laser light, after the laser light hits the, hits the cell, there is some sort of scattering. That is, depending on the cells they're hitting, there would be some sort of scattering. And this scattering of light is detected by a detector And this detector sends the signal into a computer which generates a graph according to the scattering. Now this scattering, this scattering can give us two informations. Now first the size of the cell. Now how do we decipher the size of the cell? Let's say we have a cell which is large in size and another cell which is smaller than this cell. When the laser light hits this larger cell, the scattering in the forward direction would be more. Because the cell has a larger size, a larger uh, surface area, 
the scattering in the forward direction would be more and this scattering would be detected by the detector. Now when the laser light hits this small cell the scattering in the forward direction would be less. And again this would be detected by the detector. So we can decipher that when the scattering, when the scattering in the forward direction is more, when the forward scattering is more, then the cell size is large. When the forward scattering is less, then the cell size is small. And there would be, there would be also some some side scattering, some side scattering because uh, the cell would not only scatter uh, the light in the forward direction but would also scatter the light in its uh, other directions also. So there would be some side scattering but that side scattering would be used to decipher the complexity. So the second part is complexity of cell that is the granular complexity of the cell. Now when, when the cell, when the cell has got, when the cell has got less number of granules and another cell has got more number of granules, then the light scattered with the cell which has less number of granules, the side scattering would be less. The side scattering would be less. Whereas the cell with more number of granules, the side scattering would be more. Now this is exactly opposite to the forward scattering. Now when this side scattering, now the side scattering would also be detected by some detector. Now, now when the side scattering is more, then we can say that this cell is having more granules and hence it is more complex. On the other hand, when the side scattering is less, this cell is having less granules thereby less complex. So this is how we can detect the size of the cell and the complexity of the cell. Now how do we detect the specific proteins present on the surface of a cell? Now let's say we have these four different kinds of cells. And in this cell, it has this uh, surface protein. In this cell, it has this green surface protein. In this cell, it has the green surface protein as well as this purple surface protein. And the fourth cell, it has uh, no surface protein. Now what we are going to do, we are going to subject all of these cells with specific antibodies which are specific to the proteins, that is the purple surface protein and the green surface protein for example. So let's make the antibodies the same color as that of the proteins and we will also have the green surface protein antibodies. And since this protein, this uh, cell has no protein on its surface, therefore it won't bind any antibodies. Now we also do one more thing, we tag these antibodies with a fluorescent dye. We tag these antibodies with a fluorescent dye. Let's make it the same color so that we can understand. 
now we have this protein let's say protein 1 and we have the purple protein which is protein 2 now the same the same thing is done we are going to we are going to we are going to pass the cells through the flow cytometer and when the detectors are detecting the cell size and the complexity there would be some other detectors which would detect there would be some other detectors which would detect which would detect the fluorescence the fluorescence that is emitted by the antibodies uh, by the uh, fluorophore that is bound to the antibodies now if we can draw a graph if we can draw a graph and explain the fluorescence let's say uh, the protein 1 the protein 1 that is uh, that is bound to this green fluorescence let's put it over here the green fluorescence and the protein 2 which is bound to the purple fluorescence let's put it on the y axis now if we divide the whole plot into four different parts then this cell which is having the purple fluorescence there would be there would be there would be a detection of these purple fluorescence uh, somewhere over here because this cell this cell is having only the purple fluorescence that is why it would be over here and since it is not having the green fluorescence that is why the that is why it would be near to zero in the x axis now the cells over here the cells over here are near to zero for both the purple fluorescence as well as the green fluorescence that is why these cells would be over here that is these cells are not having either the purple fluorescence or the green fluorescence now the cells present over here now they are near to zero for the purple fluorescence but way above in the x-axis that is the green fluorescence that is why these cells would be over here and finally the cells having both the proteins and tagged by both the antibodies that is these cells would be present over here so these cells are having only the purple protein these cells are having only the green protein these cells are having no proteins and these are having both purple and green proteins okay so let's go over it once more these cells these cells since they are having only the purple proteins they would be in a higher above scale in the purple in the purple fluorescence uh, axis that is the y axis and near about zero in the green fluorescence because they are not having the green fluorescence protein for these cells they are not having either the purple fluorescence 
or the green fluorescence. So that is why they are near to zero in both of the axis. That is, they're not having the green fluorescence detected, neither the purple fluorescence detected. For these cells, they are having the green fluorescence detected, but not the purple fluorescence. That is, they are these cells. They are having only the green protein. And when the, when the cells are having both the purple and the green fluorescence, they would have some values for both of uh, the green and pu purple fluorescence, uh, I mean the quadrant in green and purple fluorescence. So that is, they are having both the green and purple proteins. So that is how we can detect the surface proteins of the cells through antibody which are tagged with fluorescent dyes and we can get the results. So that is how we can detect proteins as well as we can find out the size of the cell and complexity of the cell through flow cytometry.